downstairs. If you're downstairs, make your way up. This is the last panel, right? Then you have what? Um, yeah. And um, <laughs> as far as the publishing situation, I know a lot of people really didn't get what they needed from it. But it is also, to me, the most important part of music because it is your pension. Your publishing is your pension. It is what you're going to pass down to your children, right? And if there's nothing wrong with selling it, you can sell it. You can have something that is yours, but as long as you get good money for it, right, that you, it's fine. It's yours to do what you want with it, but you have to understand how it operates. You have to understand what is the difference between a co-publishing deal and an admin deal. All of those things need to be discussed. You have to understand how it operates. Please, if you didn't get much clarity here, go online. You can find it. You can, there's tutorials on YouTube that actually break it down for you a little better. And if you see any of these people that was on the panel and you want to get clarity and you see them just in the hallway, have a conversation with them to break it down because it is very, very, very important. All right? Please. And... and we, we don't want to break it down for make it feel like on a dumb. But you have to break it down to where you understand it can become complicated if it's something that you don't deal with on a regular. To these people who are here who are professionals and they're, they're lawyers and they have degrees, it's easy for them to know it. And sometimes when they explain it to you, they're wondering why you're not going. But, you know, we never have the level of education there. Right? Uh, Sunday school me graduate from. So we just want... The item for understand said that is kind of one and when it gets heated like this it's great because it's passionate and it's it's real and it's conversation that is going to save us down the line as far as copyright law when you talk earlier about the copyright um jamaica was was under the british system so yes we were protected but the thing is that most artists just didn't know and you have to understand that's why you have to educate yourself right if you don't know they're not going to tell you just so you know, no matter who you make a deal with, if you don't know and them realize say you no know, them na make you know say them know. <laughs> you know what I said? The man say, oh, and they're gonna make it like that. You have to educate yourself, please. So if you can't get it yourself and you see me, don't you see me anywhere? Pull me aside, ask me, we explain it to you, seeing as best as I can. And hopefully we'll have this discussion again down the line. Now we're going to get into another, pa another panel right now. And this is um, understanding playlisting, which is very important because we're about to make the money from the playlisting, right? And this is very, very important. Um, Damon Doc Johnson, make some noise. He's from w <laughs> WRSV. Make some noise, man. Everybody know Dr. Colin Hines, yeah? I know him when he never have the grey beard, but him, him they vote again. Come round, sir. You're ready right beside him, sir. Uh, yeah. Um, and Colin Hines is on fame, and he's been a part of our culture for, for a, lot, a long, long time. And um, pretty much now. Uh, this brother here is Alex Tear from, C for, for, from Sirius XM. <laughs> Alex is come with him computer because he's well versed. Alex is, do you know Hits 1 on Sirius? It's the biggest station in the United States. And the, the number one station in the United States is Hits 1, and he's the boss of Hits 1. Make some noise. Yeah. Alex, anybody ever go to Miami? You ever go to Miami? Yeah, all right. Yeah. When I, when I listen to Y100, he was the boss of Y100 and all those stations for years and years to come. He's very, very knowledgeable. That's... Uh, Alex Tear and Quezzy Hopkins, Scorch Radio 101 FM. You know, you know, all of the so come on, them night place, man. <laughs> so, we're gonna have this conversation um, on playlisting, and uh, I'm gonna try my best because, as much as I have songs on that are playlisted, there's, there's a lot about it I still don't know and a lot about it that I would like to know. Um, I'm gonna ask the first question. Um, what is the best platform 
to playlist your, your, your to, um, as far as playlisting is concerned, the best platform. W would that be the most popular one, the ones with the most numbers? No? Uh, the best, it depends. Are you trying to get the bigger bag? The bigger. The bigger bag. Yeah. If you want the big bag, uh, I would say playlisting would be to go with your, it, was it iTunes? I think they have the biggest payout right now. Spotify, they are. Is Spotify the highest paying right one? No. 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 Highest pay? Oh, no, the no, highest no, numbers? Yeah, yeah. Mm -mm. I think it's Apple, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Apple, right? Absolutely. Oh, yeah? Does anybody know those numbers? Of what, what, what YouTube those are? Is I'm just asking the question people yeah. want to know. They want to know about their money. They want to know how much no. money they might get per no. streams. iTunes, for sure. iTunes? Absolutely. That's going to be the highest paying out. Yeah, okay, absolutely. iTunes. And as far as um, market share, of all the, um, the DSPs, who has the biggest global um, market share? Nobody know? That would be YouTube. Tubes. That'd be YouTube that has the biggest global market share. Because now they're, because even though Spotify is probably the lead on it uh, in many markets, in Africa, YouTube, which is, you know, in one country is, is, is um, what, 250 million, 150 million people. So that, so, that so tell me what you know about playlists and just kind of explain a bit what the playlist is all about. So uh, playlisting is it's a newer introduction, I say, over the past 10 to 15 years. Of course, we knew, like, I'm in radio, so WRSV 92.1. Originally, it was setting up a law of you have maybe 1,000 to uh, 1,500 songs that are playing a day on uh, any given radio station in 24 hours. But it's since turned into you now being able to play your favorite songs right from the palm of your hand. You can create your own playlist. But a playlist is meant to, it's literally curated to try to spread different genres or different styles of music. So you have different uh, genres, different entities that will try to put together something like a, um, if you're familiar with something like Rap Caviar on Spotify, that's one huge playlist that'll just highlight any new artist or any song that they're trying to push at that time. So the, the point of a playlist is to just put everything together, put your, uh, your, your genre or your favorites into there and to introduce you to new artists or also stoke old flames from uh, some throwbacks that you might have loved. Colin. So, um, for does, me, it's, yeah. it really is a sharing of musical tastes. Um, the playlisters compile music. Who that, compiles it? Uh, well, on, I can only speak to Spotify. For your station. Or your, because, yeah. well, well, on my station, uh, there's a music department, which I head because I'm the music director. And right. I have an assistant. And in-house, we listen to content that's incoming. We have certain metrics. How does it make the playlist? Is it, does it, well, it has, it has to pass a, a couple of ticks. It has, to, it has to tick several boxes. Um, it has to be well-produced content. It has to be sent in or submitted at a particular quality of a digital file, preferably an air FF or a wave. Um, and of course we listen in-house. It has to satisfy all the things that the watchdog organization will not put us under pressure for the broadcast commission. Like content. It, like content, it, has, it can't promote certain things, it can't say certain things, and the less the song requires editing, the less adult and street the song is, the more likely it is. If it's well produced, well made, good lyrics, good harmonies, good everything, catchy, pop friendly, then it makes a playlist. So, and based on that, some of these things that they can't say are what? Um, for example, promoting hate, promoting murder, mayhem, um, gratuitous sexual lyrics, um, all the uh, good stuff. promoting <laughs> drug use, uh, all the evils of society. Um, Deemed as evil. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there, we, there's a lot of that in this space. And so, so smart artists, what smart artists do, they make two versions. Right, that's the way, best way to do it. No, yeah. the, the, the requirements in Jamaica are, are a little bit different from the rest of the world. It's a little bit, I, in my opinion, I find it to be a lot more strict here. Yes, Shaggy. Yes. That, that is true. And um, does, that, does that hinder the growth of the music here? It frustrates programming. I think mm -hmm. we're kind of walking in a minefield where every 
slightly miscalculated step, you could walk on a bomb. And when you go elsewhere and you hear content, you're saying, but I can't play that in Jamaica, but it's flourishing elsewhere. And so, yeah, that is a problem. And that, and that stops the growth yeah. of it here. Yeah, it does, I think. Now we come into Hits 1 and Sirius XM, which is not much censorship there, but is, is there a censorship like that uh, or, you know, on, on Hits? It's clean, as it's, it's they clean. say. Yeah, there's family, no bad words. Family oriented. Yeah, well, family friendly, yeah. meaning words clean. I mean, there's interpretation for so much. I mean, Hits 1 is, a, is approximately a 150 song, you know, library mm -hmm. that's curated by humans. 25 of those songs are the most current and most popular songs. Of those 25 songs, we have different gears, meaning five of those may play 125 times a week. The second gear may play 70 times a week. Then you can break that into days and exposure. And how we determine that is by the audience reaction. So we'll move something into a power category, which gets more exposure, which sells more songs, which gets more Shazams, win, win, win. So, you know, there is an art form to a collective radio station where we're not only music, we're talent. And you weave things between the music to have a full presentation. And, you know, real quick, like for Hits One, I worked at terrestrial radio or regular radio for close to 29, 31 years. And now that I'm in satellite radio, which is now on, the, on your smartphones as well as an app, um, it's an amazing company, media company, that has this wormhole of content, including your channel, by the way. Shaggy's Boombastic is on Sirius XM. Thank you. We got, we got boom. You know, awesome channel. But where I'm going with that is the autonomy that I am now allowed to have to introduce and embrace new music. Corporate, I'll say for terrestrial radio, regular radio, was becoming very disciplined and very tight and very researched and not taking a lot of uh, chances, very tight playlists. I have met so many cool people here within the past 48 hours. So much passion. I've learned so much that I love being at the platform that I'm now a part of with SiriusXM because I'm able to have intelligent music conversations about my passion, which is elevated cool music. And let me close with this before I kind of went off on a mm -hmm. tangent. Um, <laughs> My job, in part, is to differentiate from all the offerings that are out there. My job's listenership, okay? Of those 150 songs that I get to play on Hits 1, or that we chose to play on Hits 1, they need to be the best songs possible. They don't need to be the same songs that you're finding on 7, 8, 9, 12 different platforms. So I'm always actively searching with our team to find new music. It doesn't come to you. You have to go to where the noise is. If you're making noise, we're going to hear you and look for you. And then we'll ask more questions. Are you streaming? What's your social? Are you out there doing shows? Uh, there's just so many things like Shaggy, when this subject was sent to me, I was like, chat GPT, I'm asking, what's the secret to get airplay? Even though like, I'm, the, I'm like at the lead position here and I'm trying to like look for a silver bullet for everybody here, like what's going on? How can I get on the radio? Which, you know, is, is a badge of honor and sometimes very important to people, but at the same time it's like, well, I'm streaming, I don't need to be on the radio. But radio kind of like adds like this higher dimension and, and rounds you out for your career. Thanks. I just, I really believe in radio and the power of like having a channel like Hits One, which is pop music, which means popular, which means we try not to look at genre boundaries. And right now, I believe there's a golden era in front of us with mixing and matching so many different types of music. That's why I'm liking a lot of these conversations. The doors are open. What's old is new. What's new is old. What's genre? Everything is going at pop radio, at least in the Sirius XM universe. I think it'll be a little while until Terrestrial can catch up, but that's fine. That's why we differentiate. So, yo, let me, let, just, just being unserious itself and, and, and telling people why is Sirius XM important. I'm, 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 I don't know if a lot of people know this. Anybody know about Sound Exchange? So, Sound Exchange is a royalty that is paid to artists. Who's one of the highest paid on Sound, Sound Exchange? Sirius XM. 
Big time. Respect. Big time. So the point that I'm trying to make is that's that sound exchange check that you get, right? Sirius XM is one of the highest paid for artists. That's why it's important that your music get on Sirius XM. This is important. So when I go and I do Shaggy's Bombastic Radio, I could easily have done it and said, hey, you know, I'm going to play 80% Shaggy's music. You know what I'm saying? And, and probably 20% everybody else. But I make it majority everybody else and very little bit of mine so that everybody could make that sound exchange check. Do you understand now? I fought to get this channel because there was no avenue for us to make that sound exchange check. And it was also another platform to promote our culture, the same culture that birthed hip hop, reggaeton, and influenced Afrobeat. We deserve that. Absolutely. You know what, what's, what's really cool about that too, Shaggy, is like, I, I like looking at, in a simplistic term, you know, I'm not pimping Sirius XM, I promise, but it's like, it is a giant music mall. Shaggy's Boombastic Radio Channel has a big store, like the corner store, like Macy's. So when everybody's going to Sirius XM for their favorite songs, his product is being cross-promoted in everywhere. There's, there's signs everywhere, like, even if you're not, even know that he's there, but once you come inside that mall, you start seeing, ah, oh, I might like that, I might like that. So what's so cool about where I get get to work is the diversity in the music and the cross promotion and the introduction to all these new formats and genres. Right. So let me ask you something, right? Um, Quezzy, uh, is, uh, do you think radio is dead? Oh, I just, yeah. I just That's want a good to question. know a while ago. I mean. Do you think it is? Radio, He's crazy. Okay, so radio was once king of content dissemination. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, it's not yeah, yeah. It's oh, really, oh, really crazy. Like, okay, it's, it's not one of the... Yeah, but anyway, Quasi, let me hear your, your take on it. <laughs> okay. Um, before I go there, I want to say, like, uh, for, I, was in a I was in a stance earlier, and I didn't want to get a little complicated and over-educated, so I'm here to be the, the simple man, right? The common man. To me, before we go to radio, playlisting is a new cassette man, basically. The, the cassette. new cassette man. The cassette man, yeah. Right? Um, just to break it down simply, right? How you get your, your song on the cassette? I guess like back in the day, you had to go by Stone Love and you had to go by the DJ. And hey, it come down to quality of your song. And, you know, a great song can't, must get played. You're going to play it regardless. And in today's world, um, with social media and all these different platforms, I, I, I'm going to talk for radio now, uh, once you once you out there and we seeing it because it's it's a reverse now for us with Scorch in particular um, we thought radio was dying and what we did in uh, in Trinidad is uh, we eliminated all the uh, we have no announcers on our station we just have DJs and the DJs now find these songs and play them so we just have a like it's all the 24 hour DJs. So music all day, yes. all day, right. all day. And what's the no, what, what's the outcome of that? Well, right now we trend into be probably the most popular station in Trinidad because mm -hmm. people just want to hear like their playlists being so played you're telling and me mixed that, by So you're DJs. telling me that the personality, it's personality itself, yeah, the announcer, right, is not bringing numbers to it as just by the music by itself. Not like not like before. So um, because of social media and stuff. You know, people want to see an answer, they go on, on social media. You go on, on, on Instagram, YouTube, whatever. When people want to hear music, they want to go on the radio. They don't necessarily want to hear the songs anymore. Do you, right? agree, do you agree with that? Partly, because I, I was saying people definitely love the music. Especially but I think the, it's, it might... The, in, the, uh, in the urban culture and, uh, and, and, and with just music in particular. You have talk radio, is talk radio. Right, right, right. right? But uh -huh. for music in particular... They don't want the interruptions, and they and they almost like want on demand mm. stuff. So if you get if you create it now, what they want to hear, mm. they're gonna stick with you, and that's what's been happening with us. Right. Yeah. See, what's I, your take? I think it's kind of flipping. 
because a lot of people, we have the ability to make our own playlist or to listen to what we want to whenever we want to. So the fact that y'all are doing that is incredible. And like you're actually seeing success, phenomenal. Yeah. But we're seeing a switch in the States to where you have so many syndicated uh, talk show hosts like The Breakfast Club or Hot 97 mm -hmm. or anything that's playing literally in every asked. city, so, right? Yeah, yeah. So we're getting tired of hearing about people in New York telling you what's going on in LA, like there's no c real connection. So we're getting a lot of insurgence of the local personalities or the people who are, in your case, the DJs who are now bringing that flavor to the So you're saying the, the, syndicate, the syndicated thing is dying. That's, that's what you're saying? Yeah, it's, I think it's over and done with. Do you agree with that, Alex, as, as, a, as one of the biggest programmers that I've ever known? <laughs> I, I'll meet that in the middle where I don't, dying is a strong word. I think that if you have a strong, compelling personality that gets it and you love where they're from and their point of view, um, you're okay. I mean, like even like on Hits 1, I mean, we reach millions. We're a North American radio station. Like you said, we're bigger than like the top three iHeart radio stations, all of them combined. I mean, we reach a lot of people. So... You know, I, I, I think that we, when we talk to our talent and how are you talking to their our community, we create our own community, but we do have a conversation. We are active on the phones. We are reaching out to... Does the, does the local personality outshine the syndicated personality? They can. I think, so, it's, so I think it's, it's content. I think it's all about content. So in some markets, that do happen. Yeah, they can. Because I know on your station, your, their morning show was really personality driven yeah, for um, a long time, right? And you were part of that. Yeah, my Friday morning show, it's more variety and talk um, than but not music. music. But the strength of our stations, um, Fame FM, for example, is it's music driven. And the content, we find that a lot of artists who make music now, radio is their last consideration. It's the last avenue, yes. So making the radio playlist is the last thing they have as their objective, which I think is a mistake. Um, because radio, though not, as I was saying before, the main point of dissemination, it is one of. It is now joined. But isn't it a Spotify's problem? Spotify's and all of these places, yeah. YouTube's, this is one of the but, places. But, but isn't it a problem? The reason why it's a problem is because a lot of programmers now are actually programming their playlist based on analytics and yes. not from gut. That damn algorithm. Not from air. Mm. Isn't True. that part? So you saying you think it's a wrong thing that they're doing, they should come to radio first, but how is that gonna happen if the programmers are actually you You're know, right. go, following but the analytics to, I, for, to I, do their playlist? And I'm not sure, Alex, if it varies from broadcast host to broadcast host. Yes, you you look at all the other metrics out there, you take a cue from YouTube, you take a cue from here, from there, okay, it's doing well globally, it's on YouTube, it's on Spotify, it's buzzing. <clears throat> Can it be played? That's the next thing. Right. It so, depends on the like platform. I said, we have strict rules and guidelines at traditional radio that if you tick these boxes, and that song, DJ is cock up when them hear boom rhythm, yeah? Mm -hmm. And that song is irresistible. It is going to make airplay. Traditional. No, but, but, Let me, no, but what I'm saying, is it done by, by you yes, as a by person? Yes, still by I ear. feel it. It's it a combination of factors, Shaggy. Oh, no. It's not a combination. I, you can't ignore I, the fact that the song is getting 5 million views on YouTube. And it may be worth considering. So when you get to that, you're like, oh, it's popular in the space. <clears throat> in the digital space. Okay, let me assess the song. Can it make mom and pop radio station where a mother driving with her child will not be offended and this song don't have 40 million bleeps in it? Hold on. I, I think we take, we're speaking about two many different things. What we, what we need to, to, to talk about here is basically how an artist gets this song played on the radio. No, we right? get into that though. But we'll try to understand. Because there's different. Because there's. Yeah. What? You know, like what's happening in, in, the, in the States is totally different than what's happening in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. Yes. Even in the Caribbean, because we're separated by water. We don't know what's happening in Jamaica. We don't have, you know, in Trinidad and stuff. Do you guys look at analytics? So, yeah. So, the DJs now are going on what's popular outside our radio, like what's on YouTube and, and, and TikTok, and, and, you know, that's what's trending. Most of the time, the biggest songs are on the ground already before they reached on the radio, mm -hmm. right? You play it on the radio because, yo, this is what's trending on the ground. 
So it's no longer when it, the, the radio is as influential breaking a song, like back in your day when mm -hmm. your, they pick up your song when they didn't want to, when probably it wasn't going to be played, right? And a DJ break that song, right? right? Those days are kind of over, right? Because it's, there's so many different platforms. Radio is not getting it first I anyway. Say, yeah. yeah, we get it first. Yeah. A lot of times they will send it to the, to the radio stations, they send it to the DJs and the, the program directors. But they, they're not program di directors today, not, they don't have time to be going through a picture carnival time. There's like a thousand songs coming at you. Right? 90 so, so 90 you, know what I'm you know what I'm figuring in here? This is, this is territory by territory. Correct. It, it, it varies there's no in, one standard. It, yeah. Yeah, there's no one standard. Yes. So it, it varies in different territories. Correct. Big time. Right? So why I'm going getting at all of this is to let people understand if any of these artists want their records to be played on their what the process would be. Does it be a process that them have to get um, their, their analytics up before you guys start playing it? Or maybe it's a situation that they can get it on right by just them giving it to you guys, which, you know I mean? In some cases, you're well, saying it can happen, but I'm sure for Alex, it probably can't happen like well, that. Well, there, there was something that I was thinking that I didn't want to say because it can sound discouraging. For Hits 1, I mean, I could split this a couple different ways. We're not always looking for potential. We want to hear where the noise is being made. It could be YouTube, it could be Spotify, it could be the arena. Um, it depends on how active you are in searching and, and looking for it. Now, now me saying we're not looking for potential, looking for seeds of potential or where something can go and, and building that relationship to be there early so that you're remembered when they're receiving their Grammy and that friendship and partnership you know, we can talk about relationships toward the end here, but like I am in the new music business actively. You know, if we sequence, sequence an hour of music is, let's say it's 18 songs, maybe 19 on hits one, 19 songs. Like at regular radio, they might play one new song an hour. We average close to four to five new songs an hour which means we're a super welcoming environment to break and introduce new music. It doesn't have to be something that's killing it. It has to be something that we learned about or want to start a relationship with. So we have the autonomy to have a conversation, a music conversation, at a North American national level. That's why this is such a, a great transition for me coming from radio for so long, being at Sirius XM for five years now, coming up on five, is that we have a platform that plays new music and we're not handcuffed. Corporate America is getting more and more handcuffed, at least from my seat. And we were at like 22 minutes of commercials an hour. You know, Sirius XM is commercial free. We, we ride that wave and play and introduce new music. Now, through the DNA of an 18 or 19 song hour, you're going to hear Olivia Rodrigo, new song, you know, Ed Sheeran, new song. It's just, it's all in the sequencing of how we want to present it so we make the most viable product so people go, I got to subscribe to that. That's like, I hear new music and I hear all the songs I like too. What does not make playlist? What, what, what? What does not make playlists? Songs that aren't doing well. <laughs> songs that are doing, songs that what? That Song, are not doing well. Trash. Songs that aren't doing well. The garbage. So basically, <laughs> if you put out a tune in, right? Trash. If you guys put a song out, you got to do all your social media work, all your, the best way for me, I would say, to put, and this is why I always say, don't go straight to playlists, don't go straight to radio, start it in the street, your DJs, your local DJs, yeah. your selectors. Yeah, that's for real. Thank you, sir. Your selectors are your tasters. Every artist in here should have a relationship, one-on-one -on -one relationship with your selectors. Every selectors. And you must go for the selectors that play out the most. You're not going to you know, be trying to put a selector or a player once a week somewhere. You know what I mean? You want the guy that actually plays out a lot, Exposure. and you should have a relation. Now, what does the relationship look like? The relationship looks like you're going to do things for them. They want drops. They want dub plates. Engagement. Right? They want engagement. Social media shout out. Social yeah. media got to big them up on that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You got to mention them, right? If they're about to a play out us all night, you do a pass through. College right? radio. And you do that as a swap sure. for them. Buy and once the they start doing that in the core for you and you create a buzz, right? 
then that's when it's on these guys' radar. Right. Shaggy, college Absolutely. radio, don't underestimate college radio or something starting on a campus with a movement or a following. Wiz Khalifa. College radio, huge. Like I did time, I worked in Pittsburgh. Was watching Wiz Khalifa was exactly that. You know, wherever you can find a platform, like you, the DJ thing is gold that you just said. Yes. And then on, on that, um, you've got four different representatives with four different points of view about the same thing. So that tells you how difficult, how diluted this is. So it's up to what you said before when the, uh, the lawyers we were doing CCPR, do your due diligence. Because serious compared to what we're ready to fame, compared to Choice FM or WRSV is we're more so on the serious side to where we get to play around because we're family owned, we're black owned. So when uh, Willie Daniels, who I wish was here, when he sends us a Shaggy record or a Sean Paul record, we don't have to go through any channels. We say, is it hot? Let's play it. I love, I close my eyes every time she's around. Like we got it in rotation. Like that's what we get to do. So do your due diligence and figure out who you're gonna mess with. So how, you can go ahead How and do does that. the fledgling artist, the young kid, first record, He's confident about it. How does he make playlist? A yeah, artist. That's, that's what I'm saying. That's, it, that's okay. the conversation I think they want to hear. Because that conversation it starts on the ground, as you said. You got to go to the ground. Yeah. Right? Until, until it wasn't on the ground, it's not going to reach up, up, up to us. Unless you have a real good relationship with somebody inside our station or somebody you know, who influential in the station too. Because you need an influential DJ or, or, or somebody who can really convince the others to play the song, you know? So like in Trinidad, you have, you know, the bigger names, the, the Travis Wills, the Private Ryans, you know? And even they, they, these guys have playlists that they put out on a podcast, right? So you get your stuff on that, it helps because people start to pick it up, yeah. right? Them, them, they, for them to get your record, no matter which artist it is, once you start and you're starting, you have to link your local DJs and selectors to create your buzz, right? Other places you can do it. If you're going to select them and you, con you connect with the dancer, and them and the dancer, and them build a thing for you, that help it to go viral. That's part of the buzz. That buzz is what will hit these guys' radars and say, yo, this is bubbling, and that's how you got played. And then the please, please explain to them they got tiers. There's a C list. Right. A B so, list, so and I know then an A list. So they got to work their way up on the list so, yeah. of playlists. So for radio, for airtime in particular, and I tell all the artists this in Trinidad, um, you competing with the Shaggies of the world, the Drakes, the Taylor Swifts. You are competing for airtime. You and have to come correct. The song, the song come that you bring to us, well, you got to listen and say, compare this and I will compare the Shaggy song. It's song the same? No. That song is the same? Then go play. I think one of the best things for an artist to make playlist to it starts from in the studio run the yes man them and if you leave i heard bonji garlin say this if he walks out and is questioning one word in that song he's going back to either fix it or dump it so be sure that when that record is made that you don't have any doubt nobody has any doubt then you, you mean work. is that in personal taste or quality in, in both okay both then you Make sure you're active on, all, on the digital space. Be active on YouTube, on Twitter, on, on what's it called? Everything. Instagram. Have yeah. snippets of the song out there. It's call so hard, radio yeah. stations. Call people. Do the ground yeah. work, like Shaggy was saying. Link the selector them. That is how you make play. It's not going to art, and it takes grind, and it takes hard work. So As to whether or not how you get it on Spotify and these places, oh, that's another whole day conversation. Kiss, which Kess, Kess said yesterday, and I wrote it down, song is king. And yes. it was such a powerful statement to me. I just wrote it down. I had to open up my computer. So let me ask you something. Can, yeah. you, can you explain but, but, to these? But, to but, these but, explain. Oh, go ahead. Real quick, regarding that, it's like, you know, I don't want to go off a tangent too much, but having the right piece of music done, maximum production, pride, it's a piece of art. It's a package movement. Now, how does it look? How are you presenting it? How is your group presenting it? How is it going to, you can have a great piece of music, but you also have to walk the walk. You have to represent, you have to be articulate. You have to be pointed with your conversation. You have to, you have to have many conversations. You we're not coming to you necessarily. You have to go to it. If you're an artist, you have to find out names. You have to go on Google. You have to go, what has this guy done? Who's in this department? Uh, 
And you know what? Here, here's another trick that I used to do. Um, I was a program director for many years. Reach out to the assistant program director. They don't get all the attention, and sometimes they want to become a program director, but they're a little bit jealous, or the music director. Go a couple notches under like the big shot and tap them on the shoulder because at least they're in the building. And all of a sudden you have that piece of music and you're talking to somebody, at least your foot's in the door and they might want to represent and kind of take it down the hallway because they're trying to aspire to get to their next level as well. But you don't always have to go straight to that big name and headlights, you know? All right, I want to go to something else. Can anybody here explain to the, to, to um, explain what BDS is? BDS. BDS pins, yes. Broadcast data systems? Yes. And explain to them what that is. Just the coding, the markings of when for airplay? Right, to what airplay. Yeah, it's, it's a coded system. Each time something is played, a tally is marked. Yes. Pretty much. I believe this one is a minute really 30. I, the IRCS code. Well, the, the BDS, when you, when you get the BDS, then you come in and you, you get the B media base, right? To let to see what your song, where the, your songs are being spin here and there, what it is. It's a tracker. Right, it's a tracker. And it's a tracker for your songs. Now, some shows, like mix shows, doesn't get BDS, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. depends you on have, the track. I'm just trying to let them Absolutely. know the difference between daytime spins that get BDS, which records your spins, which is your money that you're being paid, mm -hmm. right? But if you're on a mix show, it isn't the same. Yeah, uh, I believe Explain the, that to the limit is one minute, 30 seconds. So as long on traditional airplay, you got a minute and 30. Usually songs are like two minutes now, three minutes or whatever. But you, as long as you pay 1.3 of that song, then it counts as a spin technically. Mix shows, what we're talking about, you usually get like maybe a hook or a verse and then we're in and we're out. So it won't technically count as a spin on your, uh, your, your chart there. So you want to make sure that if you're shopping your record, one, make sure that it's pristine condition. Because like you said, Quest, you're competing with the Shaggy's, the Drake's of the world. So you want to make sure it's on that level but then you also want to make sure that you have all your information correct before you send it in and then once you get there make sure you get on that uh, rotation whatever you got to do to get on that rotation so it counts okay. as a spin okay. I also okay. want to talk to the young artists out there because we're not addressing Spice now Shaggy they're my superstar when you send <laughs> your Spice when you send that song to me and I open the file and I'm seeing 0005.432 dot something I'm likely to dump it. It's, it's all about, as Alex said, the presentation. If you send a WAV file with your name, the title of the song, the year, and .wav beside it, and I look at it and I see 50 megs, I realize, okay, it's a high quality file. If you send me something that you sent to someone on WhatsApp, and send me and expect me to put that on my computer, and then I have to listen to it to figure out what the title is. Not making my playlist. How no, no, no. Let me touch on that point because it's a very and I got to wrap up because I tell it. But I'm just going to let you know. See, take for instance Sirius XM, and I have this problem on my channel when people send music in, and I'm trying to get it into rotation so that you know you could you could earn. Sirius XM is also attached to Pandora. So in other words, on Sirius XM, when something is being played, you could buy it. That's right. Now, if you send us a mix that is not commercially released, guess what? They can't buy it. So guess what? It's not going to go into rotation. So if the station is a clean station, and you send us a clean version, but it's not commercially released on any DSPs, then it's not going to hit the playlist. So keep that in mind when you're doing these records and you're going to put them up, that you make sure that your T's are crossed and your I's are dot, make sure your clean version is also released. You know what I'm saying? And that th those, those playlists, to make the playlist, right, that you could earn your money. DJ Buck, no I'm at top boat. You know, it, it, it's your frustration because I can see you bowing your head because you, you go through this a lot yourself you know what I mean so that is also something you got and the BDS spin is something to let you know what your spins are so you could get played you know what I'm saying and and on mix shows it's just a promotion thing to get you the mix show is where it starts then if it does well on mix shows it goes to a C list right yeah yeah 
And from a C, if it does well on the C list, it Not goes to a, a B list. Light, and and your, your ultimate goal is to get an A list play. On, on there. Heavy and not rotation. just mixed show real quick. Feature programming, specialty shows. Specialty. We, were just, we were just talking about Scorch Scorch Radio having like a, a 60 minute specialty show on the right channel because that's where the seed starts. So, you know, you're more apt to get a chance at a specialty show and then it became so popular during that hour, it's now expanded into the radio station, et cetera, et cetera. So specialty programming is huge along with mi mixed shows are specialty programming. Yeah. I want to take a couple of questions right now. Anybody have any? Yeah, go ahead, Buck. Because I know you got, I see you itching. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, to back up what you're saying about relationships, a lot of the young DJs want to find out how to get to music to people like me. My name is DJ Buck. I run the station 93.7 WZMX in Hartford, Connecticut. Yeah, Buck, yeah. Buck, Buck. We break so much music. Around the Buck, you also tracks. curate a lot of other stations. Tell them that you do multiple stations. I do multiple stations. I have a station in Denver, Colorado, K um, Denver, Colorado, KQS one. So uh, I do a few things. But um, we break music for young artists. I find that you guys come up to me personally today, give me your music and get my phone number. That's important. Creating that relationship. Um, and along with relationships, one thing that I love about breaking music is you guys being available. The best ability for you artists is to be available. Availability is the best ability. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of artists on the island that can't leave the island. You need to be around to help break this music and to get to me to do things and get to other program directors. We're here for you. There are not many programmers like me. I come from the DJ world. I was just DJing. It's my life. A lot of programmers, they, um, they sit behind their desk. They go to work from 9 to 5. They get the analytics. They get a whole album. They never listen to the album. They listen to the one tune that they sent. It's up to people like me and the younger program. I'm not young, I'm sorry. I'm almost 60, but I still keep my foot in the door, listening to all new music, giving every artist a chance. But be ready to have that next song, and the next song, and the next song. It's just like trying to but, get a record deal. And they also have to be willing to help you promote the record. Willing to Anybody remember when TJ go on, on live and said, I'm tell you all the artists out there, say, if you put out on the music, I prepare for come out, they come work it. Yeah. You guys got to be ready. You got to work with work. guys like this guy. You got to go work. to his station and do all of the stuff that he my, needs to be done. My job as a radio station is to get the number one ratings. In order to get the number one ratings, I have to have the best music that I think my listeners want to hear. My listeners listen to me for a reason. They trust me, they trust my personalities, and they trust the show. And if you're a personality on the radio station, be great. Make sure your listeners trust you. It's not about just playing music. It will go between the music. If you're in a mix show, if you had a brand new tune, don't play three or four brand new tunes back to back. You package them. Play an A, a new song, a B, a new song, an A. It's all about packaging and how you present that song. So just have the product ready. All right. Anybody else? Give that man an applause there. It starts with him. Oh. Yeah, it, who else is there? Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Hello, I'm Hi. TJ. Um, with Migo Management, we manage Craft, Roger Wild, a couple of other local dance hall artists. Um, kind of a question, kind of a statement. The, the Broadcasting Commission, and they're lobbying to ban a lot of the music that the artists that I work with make. I get a lot of it isn't radio friendly, but there's a lot of music that's been banned that has slight innuendos. I mean, innuendos you can move, you, you see in Disney movies. So I have a question, like for example, one of my artists, Kraft, had a, a song named Audi, um, recently banned, and it's really just not, a, it's not an aggressive song with full of Indian So my question to you, Shaggy and probably Colin, is how do we managers on the island communicate with the Broadcast Commission to try to lobby, not against censorship, or probably against censorship and more towards filtering, so that one, we understand and our artists understand the standards that are needed to push out the music, two, to have an open line of communication with Broadcast Commission because when my music or when my artist music's um, banned, we don't even know, right? So just an open line of communication so we know and we can try to rectify. I think that's the first thing. And second, how do we communicate with them and build that relationship so that we can, I think, work towards a more sensible way of managing the music that's on the, on the airwaves? Probably, we probably would need Shaggy for that to be <laughs> um, solved another week-long uh, symposium where all those players and all industry players come 
and we either knock fists, quarrel, hurl words at each other, but everybody comes to an understanding, so we all understand. Well, this is, is my what. statement. This is how I feel about it, right? I think that the broadcast commissions of Jamaica is too damn anal, if you ask me. And the reason why I think I, they're I, anal... I, did, I didn't want to say it. I can't. Well, I can. You know what I mean? And, and the reason why I say that is, you know what I'm saying, uh, he's trying to be politically correct because he got a job there. But I am just going to let you know because when you see anywhere else, you know, Jamaica is a cultural hub. Everything about Jamaica is culture and music. Things like, you know, upon a radio station, I'm not saying that you must go lewd. But some of the things they might tell you to take out are some like a minute suggestive thing where them people can get on YouTube, right? Minute thing, little suggestive things. And on YouTube, it, it's just there. Your kids could get it anywhere. Them give them them like a phone and the device. It's everywhere. And then they play the American record that got it anyway and then censor the Jamaica one, right? So to me, and this is a cultural hub. This is where Everything, when you talk about hip-hop music, come from dancehall and reggae. You talk about span, um, um, reggaeton, come from dancehall and reggae. Afrobeat influence. This is a cultural hub. Sound system should not lock off at a certain amount at, at, at 12 o'clock time. It's to me, stupidness. In a culture, in a Trinidad, them don't do it. Them go straight to, to late and, and, and go to them thing. Why are we, as the cultural mecca of things, censoring so much thing that is cultural to me is just ridiculous in my in my opinion all right and and it you have to understand with the culture of, of it of it that's people's bread and butter you go where they were the dead at night the peanut man i make fee money seeing the, the man who i sell the drinks i made the bubble gum and the tringo man i sell fee money that's how they make their living this is a cultural mecca people come here all over the world for it so why are you you know shutting off venue at one o'clock in the morning and this and that. If, if residents are saying, why, well, we can't, we can't get me here, we can't, then you shouldn't burn a Jamaica then, because that's what we build upon. Anyway, from me, know myself, sound system, I play out of my window, seeing, and we get up, I get involved in it. So I just, that's my case. So I'm, I'm with you on that anyway. Um, Colin can't fix it, can work for them. Yes, sir. Yes. My name is Carter Van Pelt, um, live in Brooklyn, and I've been affiliated with WKCR, WKCR FM in New York for about 20 years. That's one of the things I do. And here's something I've noticed is that, and it even happened up to today because Esau, who's got a new album out, which everyone should check, but I didn't get it until today. And I find that the time between release and when I get music has gotten really tight up to the point where I don't have that exclusivity anymore. And I wondered, if you guys have run into this or are aware that the distributors actively discourage sharing out music ahead of release date because they don't want to squander any possible streams through Shazam or whatever. They don't want somebody like me, if I have a little bit of audience or leverage, to have that thing out there where, where streams will be missed, revenue generating streams. So we as radio DJs are losing power to, because of the DSP environments. Have you guys run into that? Did you know that that's a conversation that takes place from the distributor to the label? Absolutely, I've run into it uh, myself personally as well. Thank you very much for sharing. Um, I believe that the, the handcuffs have gotten super, super tight when it comes to that because everybody wants to get the most value for their dollars. We're talking about the labels, the suits. The artists could care less. Their main thing is to, correct me if I'm wrong, is to get the music out there. They want to feed y'all. Like we want, we want to hear the music and everything. But the labels, the suits, in my personal opinion, they're just trying to squeeze every single cent out of that. So the leaks are no more. If it is a leak, then it's a big accident. It was never supposed to happen. They wanted to get all of the streams, all the TikTok, the views, everything. So um, I've been seeing that, that same thing go. It hasn't been as, as deep uh, in North Carolina, but I understand exactly what you mean, bro. Uh, to it's that money. To your question, too, is the artists have to check their priorities. What is more important, getting it on a DSP and starting your streaming, or is the disc jock on conventional radio still considered an important part? This is how I feel about that, right? Even if you get started, radio is uh, 
any artist you know, there's a ton. There's tons of artists that don't get rad radio play, that sells well and tour well and, and pull crowd, and 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 get pole star rating and, and and do hard sale ticket. But there is absolutely no doubt in my mind that if radio kicks it, it's the difference between being a star and a superstar. Yeah, agreed. It's like verified. It's like being verified. Radio. You might be a star and you might be big, but if radio is putting in, you make an A-list and you're a rotation around the world, you're now a superstar. And that's unquestionable. Yeah, so that. radio very, is very still fine. relevant. It might not be your go-to first when you're making a record, putting out music, right? It might, might not be the first go-to you gotta go. That has changed, it used to be, yeah. right? But, you know, so the power have diminished a little bit compared, but it is still very relevant. And it is still something, if you an artist want to be a superstar, and this is where some of y'all artists get lazy. A hundred dollar to one man who never see nothing more than a hundred dollar is a whole of money. If you have a thousand dollar, and you never see over a thousand dollar, and a man give you ten thousand dollar, you think you're rich? If him give you a hundred thousand dollar, you know what you say? Retire. You don't know there's a million out there. You don't know there's a million out there. So for you, if you go so know where you come from, nothing. See, you attack, go about the pants and tear up shoes and draw slippers. Yeah? And you never have nothing yet. And you make a strong. And you get a car. You get a gold chain. Right? You have a little Chris girl. Yeah? And you buy a little apartment. Do not get comfortable. It's the tip of the iceberg. If you go so you buy a nice car and I buy a house, do not. When I went with Sting, I saw levels. When I thought I already made it, mm -hmm. there was levels to it that I could never imagine, which is why I pushed that. And if you, like remember what I said before, with a copyright law, if you don't know, they're not going to tell you. Sometimes, you have to find it out yourself. And once you do, I find it out and come back, I'm telling you, say, yo, brother, that let us, you know, you can't look for it. So when you do this music and it happened for you and you get the car and the house, right? Because you say, well, I don't have to do no work. I eat my food, I do my shoe, I collect my thing, I make my rent, I pay this, rah, rah. And you say, you don't have to do radio. Believe me, do radio because then it's get more hoes and more care on generational wealth. And radio can get you to that. But it takes work. You have to work. You have to go check them. Spec the boss. Last one, I forgot. Yo. Check. All right. Um, what, we have name, this one. Name is Specs, uh, Flow 98.7 FM, King Turbo Sound from Toronto, Canada. And uh, I see a lot of the artists them asking questions about how they can get their songs on you know, all these different platforms. But a uh, question for Mr. Alex. How do announcers, sound selectors, DJs, MCs, hosts, announcers, all those different types of, how do we, you know, apply to do a show on, for instance, Sirius XM? How do we apply to do a mix show on Sirius XM? Now, uh, coming from Toronto, Canada, I know you guys do have a show called uh, Mixtape North, which exposes Canadian artists. And um, we have a whole reggae scene, dancehall scene, soca scene, Afrobeat scene out in Canada, same way. So how do we, apply and this is for all the radio announcers and personalities here too because they want to know how do we apply to be a part of that system because it's very very hard trying to much less find the information on how to meet someone as yourself and i know i'm going to try come and talk to you when i'm done but how does everyone else apply for something like that in order to expand their careers as radio personalities and announcers and also to expose their scenes and their local artists and uh people them around you was it kind of like what we were there. talking about backstage, right? Yeah, I, I think that, um, you know, that's a great question because not only am I in the music business, business, but we're in the content business. So like us having a conversation or finding the me in other organizations and platforms, I want to hear what you're doing and how much noise are you making with what you're doing. In, in other words, it's up to me. It's on me to have the most diverse, interesting, differentiating products on the radio. So are you doing something different? Or are, can I like go down the road and there's like 17 of you? 
what makes you so special with your mix show or your product or your feature that you want to get it out there and and see if you know it does well for you and, and if people like it and expand your you know your reach so it just starts with us having a conversation no be a standard specs are you talking about getting a channel or just getting a mix show on Now to get a to get a channel, first of all, to, as a raise of personality to get on. Now you could either want to get on in this genre, you could either want to get on Tough Gong um, Radio or Shaggy's Boombastic Radio, right? I can't speak for Tough Gang, but where I'm concerned is you having a conversation with us, right? We looking at your what what it is, and me and my team deciding whether or not you're a part of that mix show, right? And you'll come in and do, you know, it could be a monthly week, it could be a weekly mix, because it's all genre based. Do you get what I'm saying? I mean, so that you could, you you provide a mix for Tough Gong. Yeah, I do a bi-weekly mix exactly. for Tough Gong. Every so it's weeks. not hard to do. You just gotta come in, have a conversation, and make that mix and and get it done. Yo, I have the last last one, but done Muta Baruka. You are the general. I have to make you your concept because I know you come with something. All right, going back to the restriction thing. I have a radio program on the radio, and it's not only the music that you can't say certain things in there, but some normal Jamaican things you can't ever talk Like about. Patwa. But you know, but you want to know. I don't know much Jamaicans inside us, so or foreigners inside us, so who know say. In a Belgium, they have a festival named Bombo Clark Festival. Talk to them, Spice. <laughs> talk, to, talk to them, Spice. Right? She, she talk about it. Yeah. Big, big pan, when you go inside there, yes. Bumbo Clark Festival. <laughs> Maybe I'll know, I'll get two thousand dollars fine to just say that. But when I say, it's just ironical that some white people in a Belgium, one of the most cruel places for black people, can have a festival named Bumbo Clark Festival. And you can't ever say, I want to tell you what we say on the radio, Bongo Grass Cat. If you go around it, bongo grass cat, and even that, you hear a man come call you and say, Muta, you can't say that panel radio, and I never say bongo grass, I say bongo grass cat. So, we just want to highlight that because that restriction thing they can't go too extreme when white people don't have it out there for them. Big in a bright light. Give time. All right, give me that, give me that mic then. Let me make the liar, the liar, big for, for, for our conversation. Thank what you is? so much. I, I just wanted to respond from the whole issue was raised. We, well, when I said we, I mean those of us who are here in Jamaica, we can advocate. Too often we speak and we don't follow it up with writing. So let me finish. There you go. So <laughs> what you all need to do, if every single one of you have an issue, every single one of you have an issue, how many of you have taken the time to right. say, I represent 500 people in Jamaica. We believe that the, how many of you have been to, the, anybody in here been to the Broadcasting Commission? I have. You alone, who else? Yes. Two, yes. Mr. Muta Baruka, you are, okay. So what I'm saying is, no, 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 but let me finish. Uh, no, I can't, I can't trump you, but just let me finish how, because since I, I'm speaking from the point of view of an employee of the government of Jamaica. If all of you write and you point out that you have a challenge and this is the issue you want addressed, it will be addressed. You may not necessarily like how it is addressed. You don't know, sweetie pie, but I will speak to you after off air. But it will, listen, it will be addressed. I'm telling you, there are things that are now on our register that would not have been on our register 20 years ago at the intellectual property office. So you say things are changing. It, it is, okay. but we have to play a role. We yeah. can't just sit down She's and absolutely quarrel. Right. We have to She's put absolutely it in right. writing. She's absolutely right. Anyway, um, it's a wonderful discussion. Give yourself a round of applause. She's been so amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Please make a round of applause for our panel. They did an incredible job. And, um, you know, sorry we run out of time, but we have to set up for, 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 for the bashment later. And um, a clean bandit at his house, big them up, right? Uh, Jack and Grace are in uh, the audience also. So big up on yourself. And, yeah, man, see that? 
clean bandit every night of the day. So we have everybody international and global that is here. And remember, tonight the showcase is going to be up lit, turn up me and Wycliffe and the crew. Many guest artists, Spice, not the house, everybody then has casting not the house, everybody then about, yeah, things are turned up. <laughs> DJ Buck, take it, bro, you know how that go, yo. Know? <laughs>